Welcome to ENTC Test 2022. Uh, today we are going to do the live demo on eVPN VXLAN to VXLAN tunnel switching for data center interconnect use case. My name is Chirag Kachalia from Juniper Network. Next, Arista, please. Thanks, Chirag. Hey, everyone. Mitch Vaughn, Arista Networks. Over to Keysight. Thanks, Mitch. Hello, everyone. I'm Shantan Pramanik from Keysight. Over to Mikal. Hi, everyone. This is Michael from uh, Juniper Networks. Thank you. So the purpose of this demo is to show you vendor interoperability uh, for a data center interconnect use case. And also number two is that customer will have the flexibility to select the data center uh, gateway. And the, finally, uh, all the multi-vendor have the common implementation of RFC 9014 uh, standard. So here is the quick uh, brief about this uh, feature. Uh, 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 the key advantages of this feature is that eVPN VXLAN to uh, VXLAN stitching allows dramatically uh, reduce the control plane and as well as the number of tunnels across the two data center or if you have multiple data center. And also the number two, it helps in reducing the, uh, the flooding of going across the two data center. Finally, it helps uh, in terms of uh, operational that you can control uh, for data center interconnect implementation. Here is the quick topology uh, uh, that we have in this, uh, in this test. If you see from the top, like we have uh, two data center, uh, data center uh, one and data center two. In data center one, we have a leaf uh, 51, Juniper 5120, 32C, and it's connecting to the spine, which is uh, QFX 10K, 72Q platform. And the spine is connected to a border leaf, which is QFX 10K, and as well as the border leaf, we have uh, Nokia. Now in this border leaf, Nokia and Juniper QFX 10K is been acting as a multi-home. They, uh, they are pair of switch and providing the resiliency for the data center interconnect. And um, uh, we are doing the interoperability on the multi-hop. And these two pair are connected through, uh, through one, of the, uh, one of the node in the transit and uh, that transit node, it's connected to other side of the data center to Arista Gateway, uh, which is 6,500, uh, sorry, uh, Arista Gateway and uh, uh, both Arista uh, Gateway in data center one and Arista data center one is uh, also connected to the leaf. So the VXLAN tunnel is going to start from leaf um, on, on the data center one from Juniper uh, 5120 and it goes all the way and terminates on the border leaf from border leaf, it will reinitiate another tunnel and send it to the Arista gateway and, it, and Arista gateway will decapsulate and re-encapsulate and send it to the, to the re, uh, over the tunnel to Arista leaf. Hello everyone, my name is Jorge Rabadan, uh, Nokia, and I'm gonna show you the uh, show commands on my uh, 7750 box. As you can see here on the right hand side, my uh, Nokia box is actually connected here as a data center gateway of the DC2, data center two. It's actually attached to the same ethernet segment or interconnect ethernet segment as the Juniper box, uh, this one, the gateway one. And we are actually uh, connected to one, uh, an internal spine in our data center and some other leaves. And the DCI part uh, provides us with uh, connectivity to the remote uh, data center, which is composed by uh, two Arista gateways. So I'm gonna show you my configuration. So for this particular uh, VLAN, we are talking about VLAN 1301. My broadcast domain is uh, configured with two VXLAN instances. The, the first instance uh, or instance one is facing uh, the, the DCI the connectivity of the DCI. My instance two is actually uh, VNI 1301. Um, sorry, it's the, the other way around. 1301 instance two facing DCI. VNI 2301 uh, facing the, uh, uh, the, the DC. So each instance is uh, applied to eVPN VXLAN. And uh, for each instance, we have a different route distinguisher and route type. So basically all the, um, from the control plane perspective, all the uh, MAC routes that uh, we receive from, from the DC, 
uh, basically get they get imported and uh, they they get re-exported re in new um, MAC IP routes with a new route distribution and route targets. So if you uh, if you want to see the uh, different instances that I have in my box, so this command uh, shows you the configuration of the uh, VXLAN instance one in the uh, VLAN 1301. Uh, I have some VXLAN bindings created in instance one. This is facing the data center. So uh, uh, I have one VXLAN binding uh, that uh, we can use for bump traffic. So it's part of the flooding list uh, towards VTEP uh, 100, which is the uh, Juniper box uh, gateway one. Uh, I, I have another one to uh, 109, which is the uh, the leaf, the, the, the juniper leaf uh, over here in the diagram. And I'm also seeing a special VXLAN binding uh, associated to the Ethernet segment that you have here. And this is because there is an Ethernet segment in the, uh, in the data center. If you look the same, uh, but for, um, yeah, if you look what is behind the Ethernet segment in the data center, is actually coming from leaf one, uh, 109. The uh, VXLAN instance two, uh, these are the uh, VXLAN bindings facing the, uh, the DCI. Uh, we can see the uh, uh, VTEP of the uh, Arista gateways over here. And uh, the other interesting thing here is, uh, as we said, uh, we have an interconnected Ethernet segment uh, between the gateway one and gateway two on the on the data center two, and that is actually shown here. The uh, uh, Ethernet segment with this name, and with this Ethernet segment identifier that is running the two gateways. And at the moment, if you look at the Ethernet segment for my VLAN uh, one three zero one. Basically, it shows two candidates, Gateway 1 and Gateway 2. 127 is uh, Nokia, uh, 100 is, uh, is Juniper. And in this case, because of the uh, preference uh, TF election, I become the designated forwarder. That's because my preference value is higher than the one configured in the Juniper Gateway 1. Now, uh, based on that, basically, we can start learning uh, MAC addresses in the control plane coming from uh, EVPN uh, MAC IP routes. With this command, I'm showing my forwarding database. I see uh, 10 different MAC addresses. Some of them coming from the VXLAN instance 2, some others coming from the VXLAN instance 1 in the data center. And uh, that is it, a bit of the configuration for the Ethernet segment with the, uh, the Ethernet segment identifier that uh, we mentioned, the preference value, which in my case is 127, and it's an interconnect Ethernet segment, all active, associated to the VLAN 1301 uh, and the VXLAN instance one. So in this section, we'll just demonstrate very quickly uh, how does the seamless teaching configuration uh, look like in Junos and we'll guide you through some of the show commands in order to verify the origin of the MAC addresses from local versus the DCI, right? So when it comes to the configuration, we can highlight that in, in case of Junos, we added a specific dedicated interconnect block inside the MAC verf. So this is something we can see here where we, we in fact define a, a dedicated interconnect DSI as well as we list uh, precisely which uh, DNIs are going to be used for the interconnectivity between the two data center sites, right? So that's uh, specifically defined on, on the interconnect block uh, inside the uh, MAGVERF configuration. And then there is an optional interesting feature where we can actually translate the LAN VNIs uh, in, inside the data center fabric to the uh, interconnect VNIs while still maintaining a common bridge domain between the two data center sites. And when it comes to the verification, we can highlight a couple of uh, interesting uh, commands where we can precisely verify 
uh, what's the origin of these MAC addresses. So the admin can have an opportunity to track exactly uh, from which site uh, the, the MAC addresses were learned by simply saying, hey, what's the origin of these, right? So the origin is the DCI, and we can see that in case of, of Junos, we can highlight uh, the, the, the remote sites, right? So here we have uh, um, the, the, the Rista sites, right? We, we have also um, the, the other vendors uh, as well, listed as the remote VTEPs. So on the other hand, when it comes to the uh, MACVER verification for uh, the, the list of uh, uh, remote, um, remote hosts, but connected to the same data center site. So we can highlight this one, uh, which is uh, the Nokia and which sits on the data center two from the topology Shirak highlighted. And we are doing the load balancing uh, uh, between the, the, the two of the gateways from the leaf perspective point of view on the given local site, uh, the load balancing will happen to both of the gateways before going into the DCI. So that's in few words uh, how, to, how to verify precisely on what are the origins of the MAC addresses. And also I have highlighted uh, the way we actually implement the seamless EVPN VXLAN stitching from VXLAN in the LAN to the VXLAN in the interconnect. So please, Mitch, go ahead and show us something good from, from our Arista site. All right. Show us something good. No pressure. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Let me go ahead and share the screen. Very good. Okay. Uh, have the diagram on the left just for some uh, reference as we're kind of going through some of these commands. But before we just jump in and start looking at the uh, control plane bits and information and all that fun stuff, we'll take a quick look at the configuration on the Arista side. And for this, we're gonna focus on gateway five. We can run these commands from either gateway, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just focus on gateway five. So show on section out of DGP. And as uh, Michael was alluding to in his, his uh, uh, description there of the solution, uh, we have the idea of these remote domains. So in this case, we have a local EVPN domain, which is inside of data center one, and then the remote domain. Now we'll see that we're actually going to have different route targets associated with those, and we will see those in the control plane updates. Uh, but we'll also be able to identify, okay, well, from a flooding standpoint, what VTEPs are in our local domain, but then what VTEPs are in the remote domain. So as a real quick uh, example of showing that information, we can come in here and say, for the EVI 1301, for our flood set, what does it look like within our own local domain in this DC1? And there's the destination VTEPs for bomb traffic for our flooding. We can take that same command, look at remote, and what we should see here are the remote gateways as expected. So we have Nokia, Juniper, Huawei, all participating here. Uh, we have all three VTEPs as expected in the output. Uh, next piece that we're gonna keep validating here is looking at the control plane information for a MAC address that originated inside of data center one. So in this case, we're gonna pick on the MAC address uh, right here. We'll call it MAC 12 for simplicity's sake, originating from VTAP three, which is actually uh, paired up in an ESI with four. We look at the detail, we see that we have the RT of 1301. Uh, we don't see the RT of the remote domain, so that's expected. But if we take a look at that same MAC address as it's advertised along to the route server from the gateway, notice that the route targets are now, of course, 51301. And we also have the L2 VNI as expected as Michael was calling out earlier as well. So we have a way to differentiate between what's remote, what's local. Uh, looking at a MAC address received from a remote gateway, we'll go ahead and clear the screen so that we have some real estate here, there we go. And in this case, we're going to look at a MAC 15 coming from the Juniper Gateway 100. And as expected, we have the L2 VNI, the proper route targets, everything looks good. And, of, and as Michael was covering earlier, there's the, uh, the expected ESI. If we look at how these uh, remote MAC addresses are actually programmed into the forwarding table. So if we look at the VXLine address table, we have, as expected, there's that MAC address we were just looking at. Uh, it exists behind either the remote Juniper gateway or the Nokia gateway. And last but not least, if we look at the forwarding plane here, and we go ahead and pop in this information just to show L2 rib. 
output Mac, and let's pick on this this Mac address again. He's been a good sport. There we go, and there we see uh, two way, and we could go either via 100 or 127, which is Juniper and Nokia respectively, in this demo. So. Just kind of uh, rehash here, we just kind of went through the configuration uh, real quick, looked at some of the control plane state, the concept of the local domain and the remote domain, how we had maintained separate flood lists, of course, for both, and then what the control plane state looks like for those remote MAC addresses coming in, and ultimately how they're programmed into the forwarding plane. So all fun stuff. And then Scienton, over to you. Okay, thank you. So here I am running a uh, Kisite application IX network, uh, which is controlling uh, a few traffic generator ports. And in this traffic generator ports, I have uh, simulated hosts which are connected to uh, different libs uh, from different data center, data center one and data center two. So let me just quickly go over through this configuration. So here on the top, uh, I have a host emulated. Uh, which has MAC address, IP address, and associated villain. And Mitch already told you that uh, 001201000001. So this MAC basically uh, is the MAC uh, of a host which is connected to Arista Leaf. And then we also have uh, MAC 15, which is which is basically connected to the Juniper Leaf, which is in another data center. And also they have IP address, uh, which is in the same um, same LAN or same same subnet, okay? So, and those are uh, for Juniper, uh, the host connected to Juniper, that is 10.30.1.109. And for the host connected to Arista, um, it is 10.30.1.3. And uh, I also have some other configuration here. Uh, for example, I have a key site leaf emulated uh, in the same data center uh, uh, where the Arista leaf is. And I, I created a full mesh traffic between the host uh, simulated behind all the leaves. And here you can see uh, the flows uh, for uh, different host pairs in both the direction. So here we are only talking about the host which are uh, simulated behind uh, Arista leaves and Juniper leaves in two different data centers. So we would focus on uh, this source destination pair 10.30.1.3 and 10.30.1.101. Uh, and we can see that there is no loss. So in other direction, so this is in uh, this is reflected in row number three, where the source is 109 and destination is uh, 1.3. And again, we see no loss. So uh, that concludes uh, my demonstration of the DCI, the, uh, how it works. Uh, over to you, uh, Chirag. So thank you, Santan. And here is the uh, slides we have captured the snapshot of the traffic that uh, just now uh, Santan walked us through. So we have the reference uh, if you wanted to see. And thank you all. I hope it was useful.